Thank you. I really appreciate you taking this time to learn more about what is uh, Metacoin. Um, so, as with all new um, disruptive technologies, Metacoin aims to change and revolutionize how we do medicine. What is the problem we're trying to solve? Well, we are basically aiming to standardize or commoditize uh, medicine in a way that would be compensating medical tourism for best practices in locations and regions around the world where certain procedures would be pioneered and would be re reflecting on the best practices uh, of that particular type of uh, procedure for people to come and visit and have it be done there. Uh, this would be somebody, uh, for example, coming like uh, to visit uh, medical Dubai city and then use Dubai as a place to recover or recuperate after a procedure or any number of other countries where certain procedures would be pioneered uh, to be compensated for based on what you do. So what is the problem we're trying to solve again? We're basically trying to create a new revolutionary uh, engagement opportunity, taking medicine to a whole new level globally through a medical currency and, and much more. So let me just explain by diving right into it. Most of you have seen uh, a Fitbit or an iWatch and some of you may be wearing one even today. Now, while they're very cool devices and we all voluntarily buy one, thinking that it helps us track how many footsteps we take or how many calories we burn. In fact, the data that we're generating for these companies is a lot more valuable than the price of the watch or anything else that we may be thinking that we're actually doing by wearing these devices. Uh, Apple's patents extend to blood pressure, um, uh, measuring sugar uh, in your bloodstream to um, your heart rate and many other things which now they have a, uh, a very rich um, system of data that they can uh, essentially dig through to figure out what happened. Were you buying something? Were you listening to your favorite song? Were you having sex? Were you dreaming, sleeping, eating, drinking, visiting friends? What were you doing when your heart rate went up and uh, what happened right before your heart attack even? So this valuable data is something that we're not being compensated for. Uh, what if that all changed starting today? This is what MediCoin aims to do. We basically want to take and turn the medical establishment on its head. And we're aiming to do that through the ability to give people back the rightful ownership of their medical data and the data that they're basically generating. Today, our participation in the internet is our, our, our currency with which we pay for those various services that we think are free. Google Maps is not free. Nothing is free. But when I go somewhere and I do something, that information is stored by Google and is then used to market various things to me by proximity, or by other merchants or vendors that would have that information now available to them to know where I've been, what I've done, and how much money I spend on average. Uh, so let's really call things what they are. And if we have this data that we're generating that's so valuable, then let's have the doctors and the big pharma and the insurance companies pay us for it. We're aiming to create a, a new technology and ecosystem in which this is not only possible, but will likely be probable and will become, I feel, the norm of how future of medicine will look. Uh, what if this data is actually something that creates a kind of universal medical currency that is a fungible currency and you can trade it with others or um, donate it to charity or even have uh, loved ones, uh, you know, have the opportunity to have a hip replacement, a new replacement for your mom or your dad be done by the kids pulling their, their medical wallets out and sharing their MediCoins to make that possible. Or if the procedure is a revolutionary cutting edge uh, study, then the procedure should be free and you as a patient should be paid to have that procedure performed on you because you will become part of a bigger study that the doctors and the insurance companies will study. So it really aims to revolutionize how we think of medicine today. So if you can store your MediCoins in your Medi wallet, wouldn't it be great to also be able to store your medical data so that when your dentist cleans your teeth and takes an x-ray, 
that data could be shared across uh, many different uh, interested parties to see what best uh, practices could be used to fix your teeth or straightening them, or if there's a new procedure for a, an artificial implant that you would be a candidate for, that you could be marketed that information to as well in an effort to, of course, be compensated for having the implant be placed into your mouth. So uh, I've said a lot of things that really kind of take the medical industry and turn it on its head. But why is this a problem today? Well, um, it's simple. Your data is not your own data, even though we have HIPAA compliance in the United States to make personal medical records very personal. Uh, fact of the matter is it's really not personal. Um, I don't know where my medical records reside and they may be in a dozen different locations. So if I just want to get my x-rays from my doctor, I have to ask for that. And of course, uh, it's not as easy as you think. Uh, you have to fill out all kinds of paperwork and why do you need it? Technically, it's mine, so I should be able to have it because I paid for it or my insurance paid for it. So why shouldn't I have access to this? Well, with MediCoin and MediWallet and the technologies that have finally reached their maturity that we're leveraging in this effort, such as the interplanetary file system, which aims to decentralize data in a way that can be easily deleted or erased, lend themselves perfectly through the Ethereum um, blockchain uh, correlation that creates the ability for data to be essentially exchanged for currency which we hope to uh, centrally uh, store and um, create a kind of uh, Bitcoin analogous uh, medical currency that can be traded, shared and used to pay for procedures uh, in case you need a medical, uh, a medical emergency or services in a foreign country. Uh, it would all be instantly available to everybody in the ecosystem. So imagine a wallet that is actually data in the cloud, cloud being billions of cell phones that share this data and you having access to this data through your phone with the ability to give read write access to this data to doctors hospitals insurance companies if you choose to if they name a price and it's uh, you know something you're willing to share for that price then you would be compensated in many coins and that data would then be accessible to them to analyze and further uh, act upon using the various decentralized peer-to-peer -peer, um, uh, technologies uh, and smart contracts, we also have a very interesting opportunity to create, uh, I would say, something akin to a guardian angel group overseeing who you are and what emergency you might be in. So that, uh, let's say, if uh, there was a smart contract in place that you had set up where both your son and your daughter would have to agree to um, essentially give you life-saving treatment or the ability even just to share, for example, with the hospital what medicines you might be allergic to. If you were ever found unconscious, your medical wallet would be accessed and the smart contract would be surfaced and uh, presented to the two people that you chose who would then have to give approval to have that information shared with the hospital so they could uh, administer the right drugs or to save your life in this instant. Um, it is really fascinating and revolutionary in its uh, inception and how we're planning to really stand uh, the medical practice that we're all so frustrated with today on its head. In this context, what we're able to do is to create a really unique opportunity to drive a technology to um, a position in our world to benefit us all through something that uh, is actually available and we can leverage today. So um, the data that we currently have and some of the problems that we face are that the data is stored in various data centers by different insurance companies, which may or may not have enough funding in the future to keep that data safe. So if they go out of business, you've essentially lost all your DICOM um, digital files that uh, have been stored by that particular company. Or I guess the closest analogy I can give you is if you think about it, like the book burnings of Alexandria, different governments can come and go and different things can happen where your data, since it's stored by other people, could be lost. If we position it in this way with the medical wallet being something that we're able to do um, with the controls that we have in place, we have the ability to um, essentially take our medical wallets 
and create a decentralized storage facility across the globe um, that's uh, cloud-based, encrypted, uh, and uh, cannot be easily erased or ever erased uh, unless you give permission to do so. And so um, it is really um, a, an excellent way to protect information uh, so that it won't be lost or accidentally deleted. How are we going to do this? Well, um, essentially, uh, proof of work here is your participation in the ecosystem. So using the IPFS file system in Ethereum, uh, we have uh, created a um, prototype uh, application that we're looking to uh, enhance upon uh, its functions that uses part of your CPU and part of your memory in your phone to participate. So um, you not only store your medical data, but you also uh, store portions of other people's data so that if your phone were ever to get lost, stolen, broken, um, nothing is lost because that data that was warehoused on your phone is geographically distributed across many different users. And once you buy another phone and validate your, your um, login to the ecosystem again using two-factor authentication and let's say a fingerprint scan or any number of um, authentication methods, your data is rebuilt into the phone and you are again participating as a functioning um, participant in this um, peer-to-peer -peer node um, file system. And um, you are essentially volunteering your data and uh, providing a way for that data to be shared across multiple devices, uh, not only your own, but others who are also part of this ecosystem. So um, Ethereum, if you haven't heard of it, I really encourage you to go uh, explore it. It's an incredible technology based in uh, some um, enhancements that were uh, built upon the Bitcoin blockchain analogy, uh, giving it the ability to not only be a um, public ledger, um, but also the ability to create smart computational devices as nodes in the network, which can perform various functions. And um, it's really fascinating. Uh, I encourage you to Google it and, and research more about Ethereum, including the ability to create these smart contracts that I spoke of. And also, um, I would encourage you to uh, Google and learn more about the IPFS, which is the Interplanetary File System, with its distributed uh, web architecture as a new type of uh, protocol that encrypts data uh, globally uh, in a way that prevents it from being easily deleted or erased. Um, again, I uh, like to think that we can all make the world a better place and we would like to reward those that help make it so. Please join our effort in that um, context. And if you want to reach out to me, please do at Aram, A-R-A-M, at mobiusworld.me, M-O-B-I-U-S-W-O-R-L-D.me. Uh, or also you can reach me on LinkedIn as Aram Kovach, A-R-A-M-K-O-V-A-C-H, or Twitter in the same context as uh, twitter.com slash Aram Kovach. If you have any questions or if you have um, any concerns or interest in helping us out with this project, uh, please reach out to me and I'll be happy to address uh, any questions or concerns. Thank you again for your time. I really appreciate it.